26 of the Hop Nation USA podcast, and it's just me and Adam here today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Just a good old classic Steve and Adam episode. It's like a charger without the seat. Yeah. The passenger seat. Yeah. We didn't want to pay the extra dollar. That's right. So <laughs> you ain't getting it. <laughs> but this week's episode, we're revisiting something that we've done twice before in the past. Basically, it's becoming a yearly thing now, so expect it. Yes. I, I honestly enjoy it. Yes. We are revisiting the Fridge of Mystery. <laughs> Move Mystery Fridge. I forget the way we framed it. I don't either. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Just cut it in. I'm pretty, yeah, maybe. <laughs> just, it'll be fine. Just take it from the last episode we did it. <laughs> uh, it is the Fridge of Mystery, and that's, uh, that's you know, basically cleaning out the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit of a cleaning out the fridge, but we the just one. reach into the fridge and grab a rando. Yeah. And off we go. <laughs> so I guess it's it's time we start in on that. Yeah. So give me a second. I'll reach into the beer fridge here. There's one. Okay. This is the... Oh, okay. All right. I kind of forgot I had this one. This is the Neshaminy Creek Brewing Company County Line IPA. Okay. <laughs> now I remember why I forgot about it. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a five hop India pale ale, 6.6% ABV, and that's the only information I can get off the can. It's got some neat looking. Uh, okay, it looks like a pine tree fighting lemons. Okay. I'm sorry, limes. limes. Okay, all right. Yeah. Limes v. trees. Pine v. Citrus. So I guess it's Stanford versus UCF? Yeah, sure, whatever. Because did you know that nope. the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tell you straight up, no, I don't. I don't know shit about colleges. <laughs> the University of Central Florida in Orlando, uh, they are the, I think they're the Golden Knights or Black Knights or some some semblance of knight. Okay. Uh, their original mascot was the Citronaut. Ah. Oh, yes. Interesting. A combination of citrus and astronaut. Right. Because obviously back in the 60s when they first came about, NASA was a big thing, and they were to be a big, large pool of engineers and technical whatnots for yeah. NASA at Cape Canaveral, so okay. they wanted to pay homage to that. So the mascot was supposed to be the Citronauts. Interesting. And then the student body absolutely hated it and completely <laughs> rejected it. That makes sense, too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like just adding not to the end of words is like the same way people still add gate to the end of scandal. Lazy. Yeah, it's just lazy. lazy and just like, sounds futuristic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, granted, it was in the 60s. Right. So, they, they, it kind of was it's a futuristic. Psychonaut's still a good word, though. Yeah. Yeah. The the mascot kind of looks like the Great Gazoo. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> kind of how, how the Oregon Duck kind of looks like Donald Duck. Mm-hmm. Kind of. <laughs> in, 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 in a no way IP infringing way at all. Right. Uh, all right. That's that a, one I do know. <laughs> that one, that's enough uh, of college mascot talk. Yeah. Let's talk about this beer. Back to mystery beer. <laughs> so, yeah, occasionally Adam's fridge gets populated with IPAs that are given to us or brought in. Well, yeah, otherwise obtained. And yeah. And they kind of just get relegated to, well, right. the, the back. <laughs> <laughs> to the back until they're pulled yes. <laughs> for a mystery fridge episode. And, and it's not because they make bad beer. I, I've i had the Shamity Creek beers before. They make good beers. Yeah, well, uh episode 53 we had the mud bank right so yeah the imperial chocolate wow that was impressive yeah you pulled that right out of your your brain banana sure we'll get we'll call it that and definitely not researching <laughs> <laughs> and then just add in the number later i certainly was not googling <laughs> while you were talking oh just to make sure we hadn't done this beer before <laughs> well that's one mystery solved yeah 
It's like while you were talking about uh, you know <laughs> mascots, I may have been doing a little looky loo to make uh, sure we hadn't done this beer before. <laughs> I was say you you checking or you uh, just not listening to me because it's oh, no, college I, mascot stuff and you really don't care about that. No, I'm one of the few people who can actually do both. I can okay. listen and be on my phone. I am not one of those people. I know you're not. Sam isn't, and no, I know a lot of my friends aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate some of you people. I, I yeah, and this isn't just you, Adam, but anybody mm-hmm. who gets on their phone while i'm talking to them that is disrespectful that's super disrespectful because i know you dum-dums can't fucking focus <laughs> on both <laughs> so, <laughs> why am i laughing at this i'm being insulted to my face but you're a part of i mean you're part of a large group though it's fine right well it's not fine we can, <laughs> we can be better yes well that's the thing you've never pulled your phone out and like started searching mm-hmm you know, while I'm talking to you. Right. You engage people while they're talking to you. You've I, never, you know. I try to. Yeah. I know plenty of people, though, who pull their phone out while you're talking to them. And then you know their attention is just gone. Right. There's no sense in wasting your breath. Right. So, Hop Nation, top tip, don't do that. Don't do that, because I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> but, yes, looking at this beer, though. Back to this beer. It, uh... It, uh, there's a lot of suspended animation there's here. There's a lot of... It almost kind of got a jello look to it. It's got a scissor. Neat. Neat. Yeah, there, there's a real <laughs> scissor quality to this. There's a lot of suspended stuff in it. It is a deep brown... Like, not a brown, but uh, this is a real deep gold. Almost like you haven't peed in three days. Yeah, this is a real... I ha- Yeah, dehydrated. Right, dehydrated or kidney problems. On the nose... It's a bit resinous. It is. In hops. It's not so much fresh and citrusy. It's more resiny hop. Yeah. Yeah. We should look up what kind of hops go into this. Uh, I can do that. I'm willing to bet there's some Chinook in here. Uh, I don't know what's I put some money in. on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I did pull a little bit. Uh, it says that the County Line IPA has a lingering hop bitterness showing a complexity of resinous pine notes, yeah. citrusy, citrusy lemon, uh-huh. and grapefruit that many IPAs on the East Coast lack. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I don't see any... Okay. I don't see anything. doesn't say anything exactly what no. hops, but... Okay. No, it does say that it uh, has a uh, base of uh, two-row. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> to the surprise of nobody. <laughs> yeah, well, my car's got four tires, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ugh. So yeah, that definitely has uh Ooh. that's a real piney resinous like back end. It sticks to my teeth. Yeah, that sticks with you. Well it looks like syrup in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> well now I've got a coating on my tongue. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on on the beer? See, I actually kinda like it. Uh, uh, it, it says, you know, like you said from the description that you found on the untapped, mm-hmm. it was trying to do things that you don't find on the East Coast. And, you know, mostly what we find on the East Coast is those soft, you know, soft ass. <laughs> soft <Hello-y. laughs> So full disclosure, I did pull that directly from their website. Oh, you pulled it from the website? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's straight from the pine cone's mouth. Okay. Either way, it is, you know, they, they, they hit their mark that what they're shooting for Mm -hmm. like it's not that soft baby shit you know (laughs) that you get uh, from a lord hobo or a treehouse right (laughs) the the thing is i don't like it you do like it yeah that says it all (laughs) right it is it's it's a pretty rough ipa yes i'll say that for sure yeah it could wreck most of your meals yeah yeah (laughs) yeah this this is a uh a a type a personality beer in so much that it's going to it's going to get your attention whether you want it or not. Right. This maybe would pair with like a really some kind of meat that really stands out. Something gamey. I was I was actually going to say venison. Yeah. Some, ga- but maybe even a little bit gamier. Maybe get into like a bear situation. Maybe a bear. I I, I think even turkey would be fine enough. Yeah. Like some smoked turkey. Yeah. Smoked, okay. Yeah, this would go pretty decent with smoked turkey. But, like, fish, that's out the door. Mm -hmm. Salads. Yeah, I guess you still could do a salad because it all tastes like vegetables. I mean, we're... Yeah, (laughs) exactly. It all tastes like vegetables, so... We're free here in America, so you can do what you want in that regard. Yeah. I'm just saying, fish is right out the door. Probably lesser chickens are out the door. (laughs) Lesser chickens. Lesser chickens. Fried chicken, that's still probably on. Hot chicken, 
That's good. Mm, ooh, yeah. I, yeah. Just, I just want Nashville hot chicken now. Yeah. Hot chickens with some pickles? Yeah. That would go pretty good with this, I think. Okay. Yeah. Lesser chickens, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> chicken the lesser. Like white people chicken? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, you get like some of the like unseasoned garbage. <sighs> That's just... Uh, I don't want to get into it. All right. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, that's fine. What do you <laughs> want to talk about then? <laughs> Let's talk about news notes and neat. Okay. Can do. Let's get in on that. All right. I'll start us off. Yeah. I, uh, I've got a, a quick hitter here from the, uh, the beautiful people over there, Marion Webster. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they got the word. Yeah. All the words. So they have provided a new definition that is relevant to our interests. Okay. Tall boy. Yeah. You know what a tall boy is. I think we all know what a tall boy is. Well, now it is official. It took them long enough. Yes. And this is bullshit because they've been adding all kinds of goof-ass words. Dad jokes Yeah, is now a word. It's not a word. Well, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's two words. Unless you hyphenate it. Right. Would you like the official definition of a tall boy, according to Merriam-Webster? Yeah, sure. A tall, cylindrical can for beverages, such as beer... You're uh-huh. usually measuring 16 fluid ounces. Not usually. It should be. <laughs> so to me, a 16 fluid ounce can is a pounder. Right, yeah. Yeah, We've. I, I think I've always called them pounders too. To me, a tall boy was like a 2.4, uh, like a 24 ounce can. To me, that was always a tall boy. Okay. I mean, I can see that, but I, I've, I've recognized tall boy as a 16 ounce. Mm-hmm. I just never called that. I I never called it that either. I I feel like we're splitting subs and hoagies at this point. A little bit. Well, I'm in the grinder camp. Actually, I shouldn't say that. You're not in a grinder camp. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that at all. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> What's up, dudes? He's looking. <laughs> Anyways. No, apparently it is a 16-ounce beer can. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. And it's like we've known that forever. It's, but now it's official. It's weird that they take they took this long, considering all the other goof ass words that get put in there. Mm-hmm. So whatever. Finally, they got one that uh, that we care about. Yeah, <laughs> we got ours. It's right. <laughs> Screw everybody else. Yeah, I only visit Urban Dictionary. I don't care about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. I don't need. I don't need your stuck up white people books. <laughs> what? What's wrong with you this episode? What? Just bagging on it, white people. Yeah. Yeah. I am one. When's God going to tell him to suck it? Um, <laughs> this, That's a real funny joke, if, uh, you, if you know the reference. I don't. I know. That's why it's only funny to me and maybe one other person. All right. Yeah, you have. To, it's one of those, you have to listen to our show, but also remember whitest kids you know. And, I had a hunch that was the direction you were going. Yeah. You like to pull a lot of stuff from there. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's one of your favorite shows. It really is. So <laughs> It's an awesome show. <laughs> that does make sense. Yeah. All right. Steve, what do you got? I'm going to go with a short neat because this was literally three sentences written on NPR and I've condensed it to one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's see what you got. 16 spotted cows showed up in the parking lot of New Glarus. That's a fantastic sentence. Yeah. <laughs> was there any explanation? No. That's the thing. It's three sentences on NPR. Like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just a neat thing that happened. A bunch of cows showed up at New Glarus. That is The awesome. makers of Spotted, spotted Cow. Spotted Cow, yes. And the cows were spotted, and everybody had a time. And next. Next. Yeah. <laughs> next. <laughs> and Wisconsin Pride rose that much more that day. Do, do, do. <laughs> Go Bucks. In November, when Alter Genius shows up, I plan on taking a bunch of mushrooms and <laughs> wandering into their parking lot. <sighs> it's a good joke. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Funny joke. <laughs> what a fun guy to be with. <laughs> Keeping it local on a complete opposite side of the city. Yeah. Brew Gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are uh, nationally known for their IPA. The General Braddock. Yes. The General Braddock. Thank you very much. The General Braddock. They, uh, and I'm pretty sure we've reported this earlier, they are expanding their operations finally. They are going to be uh, getting bigger tanks, bigger stuff, bigger that. So, of course, they need to have somebody to run that. 
Mm -hmm. And they have hired somebody. They have hired Tom Ferguson, who was a former senior brewer with Stone. Uh, He was out of the uh, Richmond, Virginia facility. Okay. And they're bringing him on board to run the Embiggen facility. The Embiggen facility. Yes. Cool. So they're bringing somebody who has... uh, Large facility experience. All right. And there's a very uh, obvious reason why he is uh, coming to Pittsburgh. He's from Greensburg. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Was, uh, was raised in Greensburg, and he decided it was about time to come back to the hometown-ish. Him and Brew Gentleman hooked up. He's going to run their new facility. They're going to continue to uh, generate some uh, tasty beers. Cool. And they'll, you know, obviously they're canning now. So yes. That'll probably just add to the stock that they have. And All right. There you go. Somebody who worked at an IPA heavy <laughs> facility yeah. is coming to work at some place with a well known IPA. There you go. Your excitement is palpable. It's a two tunnel trip. I don't care. <laughs> it's a two tunnel trip. <laughs> Not that I don't care. I mean the beer's good. It's just right. I don't I don't I, I, I How often do you go to Braddock? Yeah, I don't get pumped for that stuff because it's too far away from me. <laughs> Which uh, it, it sucks for us because there's a lot of good breweries over there. Yeah, there's a lot of good breweries. I love Four Points, but I usually get them at, like, Corner Pub. Mm-hmm. But that's like too that. far. Yeah. Too far north. Fury is the same way. Yeah, Bloom. Bloom, yeah. Yeah, Bloom's, like, I think the farthest of all of them. They're down in West Newton. You got to get on I-70 to get there. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go past New Staten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's two tunnels and a turnpike. Yeah, it's, it's two tunnels much. and a turnpike. That's too much. It's <laughs> way too much. But, you know, when they come in for beer fest and things like that, I, great, I, I greatly appreciate them yes. because they're very good beers, but too far away. Yeah. It, yeah. Fury, Bloom, Yellow Bridge, those those folks, I, I honestly seek them out when I'm at a beer fest because mm-hmm. I, I don't have the opportunity to right. to visit on a regular basis. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. But, yeah, cool. Good for good for Brewer Gentlemen. I mean. And Mr. Pe- Ferguson. Right, yeah. People already love them, so I'd, it's not like they're making bad moves. So Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to fuck it up. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, expanding a little semi-local, but farther. Regional? Regional. Pennsylvania regional. <laughs> okay. But Weyerbacher, we know them. Yes, that's at least four tunnels. Yeah, that's four tunnels, or that's a long turnpike trip. Well, no, that includes a turnpike trip, because there's at least two tunnels you got to go through. On 80? Turnpike 76, my dude. Oh, well, no, I was thinking about 80. Oh, I was thinking about 76. Yeah, no, okay, interstate, my bad. Okay. I, I call 70, 76, and 80 all turnpikes. <laughs> oh, okay. You were... <laughs> all right, all right. I didn't know you were channeling Ed Rendell on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I call them all turnpikes. <laughs> No, but yeah, that's a, that's just the trip up seventy nine to eighty, and then eighty across the state. Mm-hmm. Yes, Weyerbacher on the other side of the damn state. They uh, we we talked previously about how they had to file for bankruptcy. Yes, and now they have set forth with their restructuring program mm-hmm. because part of the thing that we talked about was that they have the capacity to brew thirty thousand barrels, but they are only hitting like fifteen thousand. Right, they had was, plenty of room for contract brewing. Yeah. So, they've offered up their restructuring plan of how they're going to, you know, utilize their space and things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, 40% of their uh, program is going to go to their regular beer. Okay. 25% is going to go to contract brewing. And 20% is going to go to collaborations with White Castle, the Slider Boys. I was going to (laughs) say, the the tiny hamburger people? Yes, the tiny hamburger, (laughs) the sliders. (laughs) All right. Yeah. They, so, all right. I didn't realize they were in cahoots. Well, they are now. Okay. Yeah, they, they are now. It's part of the <laughs> <That's> restructuring program. <laughs> so did did the White Castle folks, is that like a buy-in or are they like a, a financial partner or is it a collaboration partner? So it's a collaboration because they're, okay. they're going to be offering White Castle branded beers. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not just going to be one style of beer. So they have a beer coming out, and it's going to be a Kolsch. That actually makes a lot of sense. They say it goes good with hamburgers. Right. So so that'll be the first one, but I think they plan on doing a a line of White Castle beers. Okay. So they're going to try different styles, I believe. (sighs) All right. Yeah. I'm down for it. So um, (laughs) will you be able to get the White Castle beers in White Castle? I don't. That I'm not too sure about. That would be very interesting for a fast food restaurant to be able to obtain... 
liquor licenses. Yeah, well, Taco Bell was kind of the first one that did it. With their cantina right. subset. Yeah, so they did it first, but I, I don't know if like current White Castles would have to re zone or something they would absolutely have to at least in pennsylvania yeah so it's not yeah i that's why i don't think it's going to happen that, that be, way <laughs> that would that would be neat though yeah i think it'll be close on hand two some, dozen, somewhere <laughs> two dozen burgers in a six pack yeah without getting out of your car well i i've come up with something that's going to be this is going out into the ether and this is for everybody to try okay we don't usually encourage binge drinking fair but <laughs> don't usually encourage it, which means this time I'm going to. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to call this the Double Case Classic Challenge. Okay. And what you do is you get a Crave Case. Yeah. Which is 30 sliders. Yeah. And then you get a 30 rack. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. You, you know, see who wins. Get some Lion's Head? No, not Lion's Head. You get the White Castle beer. Oh. The asshole. No, no. No, no, no. We're, the segment is talking about the No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> uh, even though we don't really have any White Castles out here in Pittsburgh, there are White Castles in PA. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, like six other states where they kind of overlap each other, where there's Weyerbacher beer and there's White Castles. I believe New Jersey is one of those. You got that one. New York? Yeah. I'm going to say Delaware? No. Oh. Maryland? No. Mm, Connecticut? No. Rhode Island? No. California? <laughs> There's definitely no White Castle out there. All right. That's all in and out country, son. <laughs> in and out is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good, and you can't go, you can't go bullying your way in there. <laughs> <laughs> that trash garbage. All right, so what are the other states? Uh, Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, and Wisconsin Okay. are the ones where, where they overlap. Gotcha. Sure. Yeah. You can expect them to be in those seven states? Yeah. First? That's, I mean, you've got Michigan, you've got Ohio, you've got Wisconsin. That's Big Ten country. Mm Mm-hmm. That's that's burgers and beers country. Right. Bar none. Yeah. So, yeah, Little Sliders and Kolsch beers. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. (laughs) It's it's not a, hey, it's not a bad plan. No. We're going to have to investigate this one. I think we're going to have to participate in the double, double, what is it, double case challenge? Double case classic challenge. Double case classic challenge. Okay. One case of beer, one case of burgers. Classic challenge. One Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Of Penn, race, race your friends. Of Penn State football. Yeah, race your friends. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> or more than likely, it's going to be a lot of go birds. <laughs> go birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gritty's back on the TV. There's going to be a lot of people taking the... Cr- <laughs> the, the Double case classic challenge, <laughs> yelling "Go birds!" Uh, <laughs> all right, go birds. <laughs> go birds, go birds. We might have to start saying "Go birds." <laughs> Season keeps going the way it is. Listen, Monday night football, somebody's got to win. <laughs> well, yeah, this, well, not necessarily. Just, they could tie. They could tie. Complete ineptitude. Those are generally the rules. <laughs> yes, you either win, you lose, or you tie. Those are your options. <laughs> Or your stadium gets blown up. Oh, Heinz Ward. <laughs> Knock it off. All right. The Chamonix Creek County Line IPA. Yeah. Limes V Trees. What do you think? It's the most Lime V Tree beer I've ever had. Agreed. Yeah. I. It's, hey, man. If you're into those rough-ass West Coast beers. Like you are. Yeah. it's it, You'll probably find some enjoyment out of it. And if you're not into those rough-ass West Coast-type beers... If you're into that soft baby shit... You're probably not going to like it. Yeah, you're probably not going to like this. This is by far one of the more resinous beers I've had in the past year. Yeah. Not the most, but more resinous. Well, yeah, I've seen you drink the six-point resin. I, you know, even that one I don't find as rough as this one. Really? Yeah, uh, but maybe I should just drink it again. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I'll just drink it again to just be sure. But no, the one I'm thinking of is the Appalachian Mountain one that you didn't have that Brian bought back, brought back uh, from us from North Carolina. Yes, 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 yes. That one was a brutal. <laughs> that was nothing but pine trees. <laughs> that was 15 rounds. Yeah. So that yeah, th- this one isn't the most, but it's pretty up there. Willing to put it in the conversation. Yeah. I just had another one the other night, too at uh, our beer tasting mm-hmm. i had the mother earth primordial ipa okay that one's another one that was listed at 100 ibus 
Oh. And it's a it was a double IPA though, uh-huh. so it's cut a little bit. So it's got at least some maltiness to kind of yeah make it better. But yeah, that one was pretty punchy in the face up front too. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> would not have liked it. So there you go. If you're looking for hardcore IPAs, I just gave you like three. <laughs> yeah, but continue listening to the rest of the episode as we give you other information, fun facts, and guidance. Continue listening to the episode as we f- dive further into the fridge of mystery. When we come right back. First Sip Brew Box is a -a one-of-a-kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including t-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at FirstSipBrewBox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at FirstSipBrewBox.com. It's episode 126, and it is the return of the Fridge of Mystery. Na-na-na. So that means it's time to reach into the Fridge of Mystery and pull out the second beer of the evening. Let me get to the Fridge of Mystery. Okay. You've pulled something from the Fridge of Mystery, and uh, you're not having good pulls this week. Oh, <laughs> At least no. for you. Oh, no. <laughs> What's this one? Uh, this one is the Tetragrammaton. I don't know. Wait. What one is that one? I don't remember that one. It is an India Pale Ale. Damn it. From Omnipolo. I mean, all right. This one I kind of snuck into your fridge. <sighs> I thought we were going to use it for something else, maybe. Yeah, okay, all just, right. Yeah, we just never came upon it. Like, it, it was one of those times where, like, I brought over a beer, and I'm like, ah, we'll probably have an Omnipolo episode. It kind of showed up, and it just became a face in the crowd. Right. Okay. <laughs> so you had no idea this was in there, or what it was <laughs> That up, makes sense now. Or what it was about. That's what makes it mysterious. <laughs> it was a complete mystery, because I didn't know it was in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Tetragrammaton, no, is... A Galaxy Citra and Mosaic India Pale Ale. Comes in at 7.3%. Okay. Yeah, not too much else uh, as far as information Okay. on the can. That's fine. Just it's on the Polo. They, they do weird right. can art, and yeah. maybe they'll tell you what kind of beer it is. Yeah. Well, they told us it's an IPA. Right. <laughs> they told us three kinds of hops. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do like where this trend is going. Yeah. Because the Neshaminy Creek had five types of hops. This has three, so hopefully for segment three, there's only one. Maybe. I don't know. You want to get into weird numerology while we're talking about mysteries and... Fibonacci. <laughs> talking about Tetragrammaton? Yeah. Do you know what that is? Tetragrammaton? Yeah. No. It is the secret name of God. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yes, the Tetragrammaton is the uh, four-letter word for God. Yeah, I, Would that just be G-O-D exclamation point? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. That is uh, in Hebrew. You know how they eliminate the vowels? Mm-hmm. So it's Y-W-H-W? For Yahweh? Yeah. Or is it Y-H-W-H? Yeah. Y-H-W-H. Okay. Yeah. So that's the secret name of God, Yahweh. All right, then. There you go. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. Now you learned. So I did appreciate how uh, you're getting into, you know, biblical... Mm-hmm. type things and Hebrew and different languages and ancient languages and I'm over here spouting about 1960s college football. Right. I feel there's a bit of a disparity here. You watch <laughs> Hey, you watch a lot of ESPN and I don't. <laughs> True. <laughs> so obviously my time goes to something else. I don't just stare at a fucking wall. <laughs> I mean, you do have some pretty sweet walls. <laughs> Looking at this beer though. It is pineapple juice. Yeah, how about that? So we were talking about, we were ragging on soft baby shit last uh, Guess what? <laughs> Here we go. It is, yeah, it is pineapple juice through yes, and through. It is. Looks it. It's opaque as hell. Kind of smells that way too. It's got nice, uh, it's got a nice head retention. It's it got, does. It's got it nice does. lacing. I'm going to tell you that much. I'm going to enjoy that part of it at least. Okay. <laughs> it looks good-ish. Yeah. Yeah, on the nose. That's real pineapple-y. Mm-hmm. Which I do enjoy a good pineapple drink from time to time. Yeah. 
So you probably won't hate this, especially in comparison to what you just said. Right, (laughs) right. Just judging by what the previous one was and my sensibilities, this is probably going to be a little more up my alley. All right. Let's find out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, that's juice, yo. It's juice. (laughs) That's just that's just fruit juice with some just just some alcohol thrown in there. Yeah. All right, a lot of alcohol thrown in there. (laughs) Somebody tipped a little bit of booze. Did you say it was seven point something? Yeah, it's just seven point three. Okay. So it's not you know it's pretty close to approaching dipper territory. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is uh, basically I I don't know how to explain it other than it's just it's it's soft baby juices. Like, and taking a look, it does have galaxy, citra, and mosaic yeah. involved. Keep out of reach of children, because they will enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The but, tetra grammaton. Yeah, it's it's not bad. No. Like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying it that way. It's just, yeah, it is the complete opposite of what we just had. Yes. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, we didn't plan it that way. Well, obviously not. It's the no, mystery it's, fridge. <laughs> right. The mystery fridge of mystery. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I I like it. It's interesting. And, you know, Omnipolo, they never cease to surprise with some of the goofy shit they, they come up with. Yeah. They definitely throw it out there. There is. They don't, uh, they don't pull back. Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, because I, I rag on these beers a lot. Mm-hmm. Because, like, they're, they're so soft and easy drinking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's not... It's There's not, no challenge. Right. That's not the spirit of IPA. And I feel like the majority of people who said they liked IPAs only muscled out the West Coasts back in the day. But this is yeah. what they were really hoping for. <laughs> but would they have known that this even was a thing? No, but that that's why it became so popular, because when it be, did become a thing, mm-hmm. they just hugged on to it. Or They're, do you think maybe it was more of a lot of people were kind of faking it? And just saying, oh, I actually like IPAs, but in reality, they were just, they were smiling through gritted teeth. I think that's part of it, but I think it's, it. they did enjoy those harsher IPAs more so than just regular boring ass Pilsner. Because mm-hmm. that's where I am in my life. I, I can't drink Pilsner. Oh, I can. I can't. <laughs> oh, I can. I got no problem. I got no beef. I can't drink Pilsners and Lagers, but, you know, I actually enjoy the rougher IPAs. Mm-hmm. Whereas this is like intermediate level <laughs> i wouldn't even say this is intermediate level i'll be honest i've i've had some some lagers and some some pilsners that are rougher than this yeah yeah, yeah. let's be honest yeah, yeah let's be yeah, honest yeah, yeah. in terms of like, i don't want to say difficulty level because that's not <laughs> that's some gatekeeping bullshit that i don't want to get into hell yeah <laughs> i'll keep that gate <laughs> <laughs> but no this is this is super soft yeah, this is easy, easy drinking. Mm-hmm. So, but if hey, that's what you're looking for, great. Right? Yeah, everybody should go out and try this one because it's super easy drinking. Yeah, don't be mad at it. <laughs> yeah. So, I did a little bit of a deep dive. Okay. Yeah. Uh we're talking mystery. And I said, man, let's look into mysteries. <laughs> Are there beer mysteries in the world? Okay. Are there beer mysteries in the world? I don't know. That's not where my Google search went. <laughs> Do I want to know where the Google search went? Yeah. All right. I'm going to get to where it went. Okay. Otherwise, I, it's going to be a real short uh, segment. The intention I started with was to see if there's like any kind of conspiracies or mysteries. Is there like a beer Bigfoot or whatever? A beer Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> but I got sidetracked, so that'll just have to wait for next year. <laughs> okay. That's not what I came up with. What did you come up with? My search led me to find there are beer mysteries, but they are novels. Okay. There are there are a number of beer-related mystery novels out there in the world. As in, like, murder at the brewery. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, I did... I. I found myself deep diving into amazon with this one okay (laughs) that's where the deep dive took me to amazon searching through mystery novels all right now you have my attention yes there's one that i'm just gonna throw out right up front uh there's an author by the name of joyce tremel okay and she has written three books in the brewing trouble mystery series (laughs) that's awesome yes that's an awesome set of names yes the the first book is to brew or not to brew (laughs) <laughs> the second book being Tangled Up in Brew, and the third is A Room with a Brew. Wow, she's uh, 
She's all about them puns. Yes. Oh, that's going to be a recurrent theme. <laughs> oh, I believe it. Through the rest of the segment. <laughs> Don't get tired now. <laughs> Strap in, boys and girls. Just getting started. Yeah. The reason why I bring up uh, Joyce Tremel, though, is and put her facing forward on mm-hmm. this whole thing is because she is a Pittsburgh-based writer. Oh, very nice. And the novels occur in Pittsburgh. So the novels follow Maxine Max O'Hara. Max O'Hara. Yes, who is a female brewer. Okay. And then, I guess, a part-time detective. (laughs) Okay, all right. Reading the character description, it's more of her father was a former detective, so that's where she gets her skills. Okay. And then uh, she just happens to run afoul. (laughs) She has shit luck, I guess. (laughs) So she's kind of just like a Nancy Brew. Yeah. That that was going to be the name of the episode. (laughs) Was it really? Yeah. Damn it. (laughs) The first novel is about her op- opening up the Allegheny Brew House. Okay. Which is her brewery. All right. And then I guess her business partner is killed. So, when... In the brewery. <laughs> when you talk about it being a a Pittsburgh-based novel series, does it get into actual Pittsburgh you know, neighborhoods and landmarks and things like that? I'm sure it does. I didn't read the whole book. Okay. Well, I, I, but there are definitely Pittsburgh things. I will do a dramatic reading at the end of this segment. Oh, very nice. And you will have some idea of some of the Pittsburgh things that you can look forward to okay. in the book. All right. I found a little excerpt that... That's awesome. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think the breweries in the book are real. I don't think you can. Yeah, I yeah. don't think you can, because that also looks bad to say that there was a murder at a brewery. Right. <laughs> Um, what the, what you do find though is that, yeah, uh, Max O'Hara, she investigates murders mm-hmm. in the first book. Her partner is murdered. Okay. Uh, in the second book, her and her beau are participating in a beer and burger festival. Okay. And th- one of the harsh judges is killed uh-huh. at the festival. Oh, okay. And he's ki- He dies immediately after eating, uh, Maxine's. Uh, boyfriend's burger. Ah, so he becomes an immediate prime suspect. Yes, so she has to clear his name. Gotcha. I'm sorry, immediate prime beef Aha. suspect. Aha. <laughs> and in the third book, it occurs in Oktoberfest. Opa. So I can just read the... The third book is the latest book, obviously. Makes sense. I can read the the synopsis of the book, though. Sure. It's Oktoberfest in Pittsburgh, and brew pub owner Maxine Max O'Hara is prepping a busy month at the Allegheny Brew House. To create the perfect atmosphere for the boozy celebration, Max hires an oompa band. Nice. Oompa. <laughs> it's the polkas. <laughs> <laughs> but when one of the members of the band turns up dead, it's up to Max to solve the murder before the festivities are ruined. I mean, I'll be honest, I would read that book. Yeah. Adding to the brewing trouble, Candy, Max's best friend, is acting suspicious. Secrets from her past are fermenting under the surface. Nice. <laughs> and Max must uncover the truth to prove her friend's innocence. To make matters worse, Jake's ex, uh, Jake, who is her boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. Jake's snooty ex fiance shows up in town for an art gallery opening, and she'll be nothing but a barrel of trouble for Max. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta give it to her for that. Yeah. So reading through the excerpts a little bit, like mm-hmm. there is a, she did her research. Because there is some, there is some good, you know, actual brewing knowledge in there. Okay, so she didn't just say eh, it's a brewery and then they make beer. She actually went in, right? Got you know terminology, processes, and stuff like mm-hmm. that nailed yeah. down. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what her full background is. I don't know if she's actually worked in a brewery before or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I looking through her, uh, looking through the contents of the book. Yeah, because you can find it on like the Penguin Random House. Okay. That's who publishes them. Right. But you can kind of look at the table of contents. Mm-hmm. In the in one of the books, there is a recipes section. Oh, shit. So I'm wondering if there's actually beer recipes in there. Okay. She's going full, Yeah. you know, Tom Clancy on this shit. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> So yeah, there might be beer re- there might be beer recipes for the beers that maybe uh, Max O'Hara brews. I I'm okay now. I'm tempted to find this book, which I know where. Well, to find three, it. Uh, yeah, Amazon. Yeah, well, they're all on Amazon. <laughs> right. I I would like to get that book, and if there are recipes, I'd be very curious to brew a batch of it. Some of them are in Kindle form. I ain't got a Kindle. I don't I don't got Kindle money here. Whatever. Do you they see. even make Kindles anymore? Hmm. Sure. Why not? 
<laughs> I figured everything moved over to just tablets. Now. iPads. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Why not? <laughs> if though, yeah, you thought that there was only one female brewer slash detective series, I apparently was wrong. You were wrong. Dead wrong. <laughs> Dead wrong. <laughs> I feel like we're making fun of this, but we shouldn't be. We're having fun. It's it's, yeah. it's a it's a fun thing that there are brewery murder mysteries. Yes. That's a fun thing. <laughs> it is. And this time of year, it's absolutely perfect. And and you can't, like, they're obviously somewhat lighthearted. The titles are all puns. Right, exactly. <laughs> if you're making your titles puns, I'm going to be making the voice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, there are another series of books, and these were published after uh, Joyce Tremell's. Okay. Uh, so the Brewing Trouble mystery books, mm-hmm. I think the first one was published 2015, Okay. And the last one was 2017. Uh, these books, The Sloan Kraus Mysteries. Sloan Kraus? Yes. Okay. As written by Ellie Alexander. Should have been Sloan Krausen. I think, you know, that's, <laughs> that's what they're going for. All right. It's, it's there. <laughs> it's not going all the way. <laughs> you got to finish it your own damn self. Right. <laughs> you put it together. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ellie Alexander, she's written three books herself. Okay. Uh, specifically of the brewing and murder mystery nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Her first book is Death on Tap, followed by The Pint of No Return. And then she has a book releasing October 1st. Okay. Oh, okay. Of this year. That's actually so, extremely relevant. Yeah, right around the corner. It's called Beyond a Reasonable Stout. Oh, damn it. That's good. <laughs> I don't care. That's a good title. <laughs> Uh, I pulled the I pulled the synopsis for the pint of no return though. Okay. Because it is also timely for right now. Yeah. Because it's another Oktoberfest murder mystery. Hey, Zuffa. <laughs> Zuffa. <laughs> Eins, zwei, drei, <laughs> murder. Ah, <laughs> uh, nice. So yes, the synopsis for this one is. Uh, uh, well, so the basic breakdown of these stories is uh, Sloan Krauss mm-hmm. lives in the Pacific Northwest. That, okay, yeah, makes sense. So if you don't believe that there's a brewer in Pittsburgh that can solve murders, well, there's one in the Pacific Northwest that can as well. Right. <laughs> um, but yes, she lives in Leavenworth, Washington. Okay. That, that's the basis of these stories. Mm-hmm. And the synopsis for The Pint of No Return is, no other festival compares the Oktoberfest in Leavenworth, Washington. The whole town is buzzing with excitement over the year's activities and eagerly awaiting nitros. And this is Sloan's Brewery. Okay. That she works at. Latest offering, Cherry Weizen. Cherry Weizen. Yes. Made with locally sourced cherries. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, all, all of the descriptions I read, they actually get pretty into, like, the beer that's being brewed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. It's like, okay, interesting. Um, but local brewmaster, Sloan Krausen... Nope. I damn nope. it. <laughs> but local brewmaster Sloan Krause is tapped out. Between trying to manage the pub, her pending divorce with Mac, and her mounting feelings for Garrett, she's fermenting an in inter- internal turmoil. Yes. yes. To complicate matters, dreamy movie star Mitchell Morgan and his production crew have arrived in the village to film during the authentic Bavarian brew fest. Mitchell has his eye on Sloan and a taste for Nitro's cherry wisen. Sloane escapes his advances for good when she finds Mitchell slumped over the bar. Is this a case of one pint too many? Or has Mitchell been murdered by microbrew? That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. <sighs> I, I want to see that. Yeah. I want Brad Pitt to be involved <laughs> in the major motion picture adaptation of that. Yeah. That's uh, pretty decent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's... It's it's all there. Let's get the people from Buzzard Hollow Beef involved. <laughs> right. Tara, if you're listening, please adapt. Yes. <laughs> please and thank you. Please and thank you. If you need consultants, let us know. Yeah. Uh, I will say that she also has a series of uh, bakery-themed murder mysteries as well. She, she has about the, 10 bake shop mystery the murders. The puns are endless there. Oh, let me give you a couple. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fire a away. batter of life and death. <laughs> yes. Fudge and jury. <laughs> Meet your baker. And finally, for you know your holiday shopping gift giving, a cup of holiday fear. 
poetry. Po- Pure poetry. <laughs> Adam loves puns. Adam has the new books that he has to go read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I found uh, two other books. And uh, one, it, it, you can get it on the ground floor because it seems to be the start of a uh, series, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Uh, but it's called Murder in the Crooked Eye Brewery. Okay. Yeah. It's book one in the Marcy Rayner series. Is this also take place in the Pacific Northwest? No. Oh. I don't know where it takes place. I right. forget. <laughs> I, I assume since it was Rainier. Right. No, it's Rainer. Oh, Rain. Uh, <laughs> Not Rainier. <laughs> all right. Well, whatevs. Uh, but it is written by J.C. Eaton. Okay. Uh, this might not be a series of brewery murders. But at least the first one's going to involve a brewery? Right. The first one involves a brewery. Okay. What's the name of this one? Murder in the Crooked Eye Brewery. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I thought that was just kind of a quick synopsis. No, no. All right. <laughs> I mean, that is what happens, too. But <laughs> It's right there in the title. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's apparently book one in a series, but they haven't released one in 2019. Oh, is this one released in 2018? Yeah. Gotcha. So it's possibly she just died in the first book. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, he also does offer a series of wine-themed murder mysteries as well. Oh, man. <laughs> Which, they have some real inexplicable covers to me. Uh, oh, really? There's a lot of corgis and goats. <laughs> corgis? Corgis, the dog. As in tiny little yes. footed dogs. Right. And goats. And goats. See, <laughs> here's the thing, though. You can draw a lot of people in with corgis and goats. I know. I'd look at a book, book that had corgis and goats I, on I it. mean, I'm, I'm not trying to stereotype here, but I'm pretty sure that these are trying to draw women in because they're it's wine. Yeah. Corgis and yeah. goats. <laughs> I mean, you don't yeah. have to be a woman to enjoy those sorts of you don't, things. No, you don't have to be, but I think that ca- that catches that audience a lot quicker. I'll be honest, I'd just take the goats out. Well. Just out of the picture. But that's the thing. Women love goats. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take alcohol and I'll take corgis All right. and I'll have myself a day. Well, there you go. So you can look into J.C. Eaton's so ladies, line of books. If you're looking to woo, <laughs> just get a corgi <laughs> and some alcohol. Find your man. Nah, have yourself a time. Sure. Stone Cold Fact. Sure. <laughs> that, I think that's just a woo you. Woo. I don't love those dogs. <laughs> you don't love corgis? No. Oh, all right. All right, German Shepherds then. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> now you want to put on some German Shepherds and, you know, blast some Cannibal Corpse? All right. You know. Get you some burial? Yeah. Give me some burial? <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah. Have woo make the, it a metal day. Sorry. <laughs> you woo the pants off them. <laughs> so the, the final murder mystery book that i found that was beer related okay uh I, I i'm this one i'm not sold on oh this one might be an example of bad <laughs> okay so far they all actually sound like books i would pick up yeah they all sound like airplane readers to mm-hmm. me yeah uh but uh yeah this one is called finn hops and hugs distilled with danger um so yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot going on there. So Finn is just the name of the main character. Oh, okay. It is from the Bradley Farm Cozy Mystery Series book. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it so it just follows like different people with the last name Bradley, I guess. Okay. Belong to this farm. Uh Hops and Hugs, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and distilled with danger, that's wrong. Yeah, that's that's what I was tripping up there's on. There's no yeah, there's no distilling. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, it's about a, 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 the divorced Finn living in his parents' farmhouse, and then he finds a girl, and the girl makes him want to change, so he decides to open up her brewery to impress her. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but then the bar owner's dangerous secrets could cast a dark cloud over his bright new future. Before he knows it, Finn finds himself entangled in a treacherous Bitcoin scheme? What? <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin scheme? Is is he just going after millennials? Yeah. With... And targeted by a killer with his sights set on his new love. All right. Yeah. So, Mary Jane Forbes, I don't know <laughs> what to say about your book. I I would be I I I would give it a try. Somebody else needs to read that one for me. I would me. give it a read. Somebody read that for me. But I I think I I'd have to start with the uh the Joyce Tremel series. Yes. Uh that that is top of the list. Right. So, let's go back to the Tetragrammaton. Yes. And then we're going to end the segment with a dramatic reading. Okay. From Joyce Tremel's 
third book. Okay. So the Tetragrammaticon. <laughs> yeah, this is the exact opposite of that County Line IPA by Neshaminy Creek. For sure. This is a uh, this is pineapple juice. That's all there is to it. It's pineapple juice. But you don't seem to have a real problem drinking it. I don't. I don't. It it, it doesn't have like a harsh resinous back end on it. Mm-mm. No. Uh, now, granted, there are still other beer styles that I would prefer. Oh yeah, on I mean, top of this for you, yeah, right. But if I had, if I, if I had these two cans sitting in front of me, oh yeah, knowing now <laughs> what I know, it's pretty obvious which one I would take based on my personal tastes. No, yeah. no comment on you know brewing ability and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, I know which one I would pick. Mm-hmm. For me, it's it's kind of a toss up, I guess. Mm-hmm. On which one I would pick of the two, but... You just take them both. Yeah. Just looking at this beer, though, I mean, it's so opaque that I can't tell if there's shit floating around in it. That's actually a very good point. So that's fine. It covers it covers up a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> yes. Because it's that <laughs> opaque. <laughs> it's uh, taking the stout route. Right. It, and I'll say, you know, it does have a really refreshing flavor to it. It's it's not so... it's. It has actual flavor. It that's does. One of, that's, that's one of my big criticisms of these New England IPAs a lot of the time, mm-hmm. is that they're just dusting them with hops, yeah. and that there's no flavor to them, but you get an actual flavor profile of, you know, it, it is pineapple juice, but yes. you, you at least get that. Right. It's <laughs> it's something. Yeah. However, I, mm, I don't know that I would be able to drink more than one of these. I don't think this is something I'd be, you know, crushing through a four pack and calling it a Tuesday. I could. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think I would. But that's just that's just yeah. me. So. I, yeah. It, I guess in comparison to other things that we had on the show, I still think I like the pseudo Sue better. Mm-hmm. But I might put this over the Alpha King. Okay. Yeah. All right. If that if that helps anybody's, it helps me. Yeah. If that helps anybody out in the world. <laughs> okay. Well, while they contemplate that, while they contemplate that, we're gonna do a dramatic reading from the third book of the Brewing Trouble Mystery Books. By Joyce Tremel, A Room with a Brew, the Oktoberfest one. <laughs> I, I hope that's not the subtitle. No. <laughs> the the Oktoberfest one. It's a pretty good one, though. <laughs> yeah. There were only two couples on the dance floor until the band broke out in their version of the Steeler Polka, which was sung to the tune of the Pennsylvania Polka. A dozen people jumped to their feet, including Candy. She grabbed my hand. Come on, you're dancing with me. I tried to pull my hand back with no luck. I don't know how to polka. I'm Irish. A Harris don't polka. I won't hold that against you, she said. It's easy. It's your basic one, two, three, one, two, three. Just follow me. Do I have any choice, I asked, as she practically dragged me across the room. Everyone in the hall seemed to know the words to the song, but I was too busy trying not to trip over my own feet to sing. By the time the song ended, I could reasonably say I knew how to polka, or at least fake my way through one. We stayed on the dance floor for the beer barrel polka, but I drew the line when the band began playing the chicken dance. I had my pride after all that. The Deutschmen finished the song and announced they were taking a break and would be back shortly. Hi, I'm Matt. And I am Jesse. So, like, what is American Slacker, I guess, right? The highest amount of dick jokes per episode per podcast. We've been on the air for 57 straight years. 57 straight years of dick jokes. Thing is constantly soaring over my head. You pull on my chain and your weekly weird news. We're also cannabis friendly. We kind of sneak it in there, almost like you're lacing the brownies at the family reunion. It's the ride of your motherfucking life. Fucking 11 when there's only 10 on the dial. Weapons of mass destruction. It's a threat to society. Food assaults. Yeah, that happens too sometimes. An ostrich took a lit match into a fireworks factory. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that one. No, that's our third story. <laughs> oh my God. America, what are you doing? So is someone dumb getting fucked over. Well, you know, they should have never gave raccoons rights, in my opinion. <laughs> oh my God. You can help us. You can help everyone. Download our shit now. We're second America. America. Welcome back to episode 126 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. And it's time for our third beer from the mystery fridge of mystery. I'm not doing the sound this time. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This was an easy one. Easy pull. It was an easy pull. And I actually know this beer. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I knew it existed. Oh, it's like personally? Like Yes, we we uh you hang out at the BF dub together? <laughs> we do. Got bowling on Wednesdays, do you? <laughs> uh it's Tuesdays, thank you very much. What is? I don't know. Uh, this is from the Southern Star Brewing Company. This is the Buried Hatchet Stout. Oh, okay. I believe they're out of Texas. Yes, Conroe, Texas. Conroe, Texas. Conroe, Texas. Beautiful Conroe, Texas, which is in the middle. Fuck if I know. I don't know either. <laughs> How close is it to Noose and Gun, Texas? <laughs> what? Uh, right. So there is a uh, Werner Herzog documentary. Okay. And it's all about the death row. Oh, okay. Uh, or yeah, it's all about death row and the death penalty. And um, the main story he focuses on is one that's out of Texas. And man, if I can't remember the name of it, but it's like Noose and something Texas. It is, yeah. <laughs> Yikes! This is not a place you want to fuck around in. <laughs> no, no. I uh, I feel I would go to the next exit for that one. Yeah. <laughs> so let me get you a little description of the buried hatchet stout here uh, from Southern Star. You hold in your hand a stout for stout lovers. Okay, good start. Buried hatchet is brewed with a large quantity of brown malt reminiscent of a traditional pre-industrial revolution malt profile. This stout is full of robust, roasted flavors, which intermingle with a bittersweet creaminess that concludes to a perfect warming finish. Actually sounds pretty good. Hmm. I think I convinced myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea on the ABV or the IBU or anything like that. I'll look it up. We'll look it up. Yeah, all you had to say was stout, and I'm convinced, so. Right. And I was convinced because I didn't say IPA again. So taking a look at this little guy. Yeah. Guess what? It's a stout. Yeah. That's, it looks like a stout, although honestly it's a, a skosh on the lighter side, especially looking at your glass from a bit of an angle. Yeah, it is, I can definitely see, like if I bend it against the light, I can see into it. Mm-hmm. So I can look into the abyss. Yes. That's the name of the Werner Herzog film. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, also, <laughs> interestingly, <laughs> um, the, 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 I, I was doing a little searching. Uh-huh. And, uh. The Into the Abyss takes place in Conroe, Texas. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. <laughs> so what I, I didn't know I was making that joke <laughs> about the noose and knife Texas or whatever it is. Yeah. But yeah, no, it actually is really close to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Conroe, Texas. Uh, the, uh, the, the movie is following um, some guys that were convicted of murder. Okay. In Conroe, Texas. And Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, yes, yeah, check it out. Uh, it's an inter- It's a real interesting look at like the death penalty and uh, yeah. How old is the film? Not too old. All right. Yeah, I think it's like within the past ten years. So okay. Yeah. All right. It's Werner Herzog. It's good. Fair <laughs> enough. It's a good documentary. So I just smelled this beer. Yeah, I like the smell. Yeah, it's that smells really good. <laughs> really does. It, it, it's got a real roastiness to it. It does. And, and roastiness, and honestly, it's kind of got a, got a chocolate bent to it as well. Yeah, I get a little tiny, tiny bit of chocolate, but it hits you up front with like a real strong roast. Yeah, I'm, uh, I like the smell of this. Let's see if the taste does the same thing. How do you like that for a lead in? Yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. So not so great with murder, but pretty good on stouts. <laughs> <laughs> High five. One for two, Conroe. Put it on the welcome sign. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to Conroe. Not great for murder, but we make a good stout. Hey, I mean, that's surprising, though, <laughs> because it's out of Texas. Why are you drinking hot-ass stouts? I, I I, don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can say the same thing for, like, Cigar City down in Florida. Right. Well, I do. <laughs> what are you guys <laughs> doing true. drinking hot-ass stouts? <laughs> Why the hell is everybody going crazy for Hoonapoo? <laughs> right. When it's hot as muggy as a motherfucker. <laughs> I don't admit, dude, this is a really good beer. Yeah, this is really drinkable. This is the yeah. roast. The roastiness is pretty top notch on it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it definitely goes different from a lot of stouts that you drink. It's not that sweet. Uh, yeah, it, although you know what, I can see this poured over a little bit of ice cream. Yeah, I think that'd be really good. Well, yeah, it would pair well with something sweet because it it does have those chocolate flavors. Right, but the beer itself isn't that sweet. No, but it's it's good. No, this is a this is a fine beer. I'm kind of disappointed that I uh, waited this long to drink it. Well, now you drink it on the show. Yes. So everybody <laughs> knows to go get it. Everybody. So I was doing some thinking during the break as well. And uh, we we just got done talking about the murder mystery books. Yes. 
I think we need to write our own. Okay. Because even though all the murder mystery books I found, they were all brewery based. But none that are homebrew based. Homebrew based. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have a name? I, I do. What is what's what's the name? <laughs> this this is always what it was leading to. All right. <laughs> it's going to be the homebrew mystery books, and then the first one is called Trub Old in Paradise. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were friends. <laughs> Trub <Old> in Paradise. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> This buried hatchet stout's really good, and I'm going to continue to drink it. Kind of hoping I can forget that. No. Transgression that just happened. No. Trouble in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, no, thank you. Fine. You don't like what I'm bringing to the table? What are you bringing to the table? I'm bringing mysteries. Yeah, mysteries? I got mysteries. What kind of? So, in the past, we have had a segment called Beerify It. Mm-hmm. Where what we would do is whatever the theme would be for the for that episode, we would try to generate a beer around said theme. Now, unfortunately, with a mystery beer, if we created it, it really wouldn't be a mystery, and I right. don't I don't think it would sell well. No, if you just had you know a black and white can that said beer on the side, I don't think you're going to be able to get too much out of it. I think somebody's done that. Yeah, Canadians. Canadians have done that, yeah. Yeah. Didn't they also do a little small run for the Dharma Company? Uh, like, for, just like a promotional run. Yeah, yeah. for uh, for the uh, the Lost TV right, show. Right, yeah. Yeah, I thought, I thought they did that. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to go a little bit larger. Okay. And we are going to barify it. Okay, we're going to barify it. We're going to barify it. We are going to generate a mystery bar. A mystery bar. Yes. Okay, we got to walk the line on this one because there is a mystery brewing company. There is. Okay. There is. We're, we, I didn't know if you knew that, but I, I knew that. I did know that, okay. yeah, doing a little bit of research. What we're going to do is we're going to create a mystery bar for the patrons. Now, obviously, the people that work there know the shtick. They know what they're going to do, but the people that walk in don't necessarily know what's going on. Okay. So, I have a few ideas, uh, and I'll, uh, this will kind of just whet your appetite mm-hmm. to, to kind of get the juices flowing, so to speak. Okay. But at the bar... Um, there are systems out there where you have a a tap system at every table. Okay. Uh, it's a, that's a thing. It's a fact. Yeah. Where you can, you know, based on like RFID tags on your wristband and stuff like that, where it'll keep track of how much beer you pour, what you're pouring, and stuff like that. Yeah. What I want to do is at every table that has one of those, uh, you only have one tap. You can't choose what beer is going to be poured. Okay. And it changes every six minutes. Ha! <laughs> so you literally have no idea what is coming out of that tap. I was with you until the six minute change. Okay, why is that? Because you're just gonna fuck your lines up. All right, okay. <laughs> and it's it's just all gonna taste gross at some point. <laughs> I, I like I like the idea mm-hmm. that you walk into a place and then you're just assigned a table. Yeah. And you just get a beer. Yeah. Like it's not you know you don't get to pick what beer you're getting. Mm-hmm. You just get assigned a tap, and whatever's running through that tap, you drink. Okay. We can, I we, like that. We can adjust accordingly. We can do that. This, yeah. is, this is a work in and progress. That's just a mystery, and then like maybe you order off your menu right? according to what's coming out of your tap. So what the other thing we can do is, and, and we can do that. Maybe it's, maybe it's a once a day, and you don't know what it's going to be. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can change. Like Things can change throughout the week and as it's opened up. I'm assuming this is like a pop-up bar. Sure. Okay. Because I, I don't know where it's going to be. <laughs> right. It, it, just sound, a, it just sounds like a pop-up idea where it's right. like, oh, it's a mystery. And then like people get like mad FOMO. Yeah, exactly. Because they're, they're like, oh, shit, I had, the, I had table eight last night. I could try to get that table 10. Right. I had to find it somewhere, somehow. Yeah. I got to yeah. get that table 10, see what's up. Yeah. The other thing we can and should do is because the people at the bar itself, uh, they need a little bit of love as well. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a bank of mystery beers. The uh, the taps are unlabeled. Okay. And all you get to do is you get to choose a number between one and ten. Okay. And you say, I want four, I want six. That's it. Based on your lucky number, between one and ten. Okay. Can I, can I improve upon this, maybe? Yeah, sure. Possibly improve upon yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. 
So there's uh, there's a lot of really simple number generator apps. Yes. On the internet. Mm-hmm. So why not just like touch a tablet ah. and let it choose for you? Okay. All yeah. right. So that can be something that, uh, and that can be for at the bar and at the tables as well. If for some reason there are tables that don't have taps, mm-hmm. you know, because that's not just how you order. Right. Because right. I, I feel like you're going to eventually uh, acclimate to whatever you're drinking. That is a fair point. Yeah. Don't don't let people try to figure out what they're drinking. Switch it up on them. Keep it new. Yes. <laughs> yes. And of course, obviously, you would have the mystery flights mm-hmm. where it's just four or five beers of, oh. Oh, whatever. Figure it out. No. You figure it out. Yes. Now, there there has to be some incentive of why you would be able to, why you would go there. Yeah. No, you have to have quality beers there. But my thought is... If you are able to actually pinpoint what that beer is that you're drinking uh-huh. down to the brewery and the name, yeah, it's free. Okay. I was going to say maybe six pack. That would work too. Yeah. Give, but yeah, you're right. Give them some sort of prize. Yes. They have to have something to work towards. Yeah. Because like, they've done that with, uh, I think they've done that with like Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week. They do like an IPA guessing game. They do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or they did. They did. I did. Should did. say that. Yeah. Rest in power. <laughs> <laughs> the Pittsburgh power? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're dead too. Right. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> it's all gray and bleak and... Aw. Anthony Morelli don't have a job. <laughs> wow. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. <laughs> Penn State. <laughs> Oof. Did he win a big, big Ten championship? Uh, I think they did. Didn't they? Because he was around in, what, 09? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, I think I think he's a Big Ten champ. Yeah, he was on the come up on my way out, so. That would sound about right, because you graduated in, what, 08? 07. 07? Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Burp, burp. One other thing I think we need to add is on the servers, and this is kind of a dick move, but I enjoy it, Uh huh. is you have servers, but you don't know which one is actually helping you. And only one is able to help you. Hell yeah. And it, and it changes every 10 minutes. Hell yeah. That's that's okay to change. <laughs> Hell yeah. And put them all in morph suits. Yes. With big question marks on the face. Yes. <laughs> that way you have no idea. You can, There's no recognition. Just people screaming, help. <laughs> help. I need to pay my tab and help. leave. Yeah. Help. <laughs> maybe you give them like a, maybe a number. On on the on the server. Okay. You know, one through yeah. ten. Yeah, one know. through ten. Like a bunch of Batman villains. Yes. Help me number eight. Yeah. <laughs> bunch of Batman villains yes. serving you food. Yes. <laughs> and the food. We need to figure something out with the food. So uh, I, I was thinking I don't know if you can do a full menu. I don't think you can. I feel like I feel like maybe just dessert. Mm-hmm. And what you do with dessert is that you make a series of clear gelatins. Ah, okay. And then the clear gelatins are just flavored. So my other thought was, and you can still stay stay in the dessert realm, mm-hmm. but my original thought was calzones okay. or strong bullies. Oh, yeah, there you go. Because you don't know what's inside until you break it open. There you go, yeah. 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 Now, obviously, with something like that, you would have to give a list of things that you were allergic to. Right. You, you'd have to f- front load it with a little bit of information. Right. You don't want to kill anybody. Yeah. You're supposed to be a little think, more committal to not killing people, Steve. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just trying. No, <laughs> it's I'm, like, oh yeah, I guess. I, I'm, right, wor- I'm working it out in my brain. Okay. So, so like for like people who are in the meat and things like that, yes. they get the calzones. Yes. But for people that are into uh, vegetables or can't have certain foods, mm-hmm. you give them the uh, you give them like uh, meat pies. Yes. Not meat pies, but pies. Yeah. Yeah. And that that was the other thing I was going to mention was was straight up pie. Right. Obviously, you can't do a pumpkin. Yeah. Because that's exposed. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> or the it, you could confuse it with sweet potato. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But the thing is, they'd have to order the entire pie. Or, I got I got a side for that. Okay. Uh, so, go back to episode 107, I think. Okay. And we were talking to Brian at the North Hills Home Brew Fest. Yes. And he was telling us about people who put pepper in their pumpkin pie. Ah, that's true. Which I kind of want to try. Some pumpkin pies are peppered, some are not. Yes. Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to, you could do a pizza where the cheese is the just super thick and on the top layer. 
Where is that? Well, now, what's that bullshit pizza that has Papa the Jones. top crust? Well, other bullshit pizza. <laughs> no, there's the ones that has the top layer of crust. Oh. You ever uh, have those? No. Okay. No. So, I'm not making it up. I, I, I assume you're not. I, know it's I just not, don't know what... It's not a style that's Right. It's not popular. New York. It's not Chicago. It's not Detroit. Yeah. It's not a style that's popular, especially not currently. Right. Because I can't think of it, and I eat pizza way too much. Yeah. There's definitely a time... In the '90s, when shit was wild, <laughs> that there 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 was pizza pies with a top crust. I, I believe the proper term was extreme. Yeah, shit with was a, extreme back then with a giant slashy X. Yeah, stuff stuff's wild nowadays. Yeah. It was extreme back then. <laughs> Bring back Josta, or I'm gonna fight somebody. <laughs> I thought they did once already. No, they brought back Jolt, and they brought back Surge. Everything but everything but Josta. I'm sorry, my dude. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Your time will come. Be the change. <laughs> Just run into the. I, I don't even Coke. know who it was, owns. It was Coke. Oh, okay, well, it was Coke. Okay, well, one stupid Coke allowed Chris, Crystal Pepsi to come back, but they never. Crystal Pepsi sucked. I know Crystal it, Pepsi's ace. It was so bad when I tried it again as an adult. Yeah, I want my Canadian Clear and yeah. I want my Josta. Yeah, bring it back both. I'm fightous. And the USA. I don't care about that. I do. That was like the, it, it was. I'm pretty good. sure that comes back all the time. I hope it does because when it does, I'm buying crates. Oh, speaking mystery. Yes, we're, we're on the mystery. I mean, it's mystery tangential. Yeah, Mountain Dew has a mystery flavor out. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it that Mountain Boo? Yeah, it's Mountain Boo. Okay. And I'm pretty sure it's like salted caramel. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I tried it. I was just like in line at Walmart. I was like, eh, fucking, I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah. So get, we, we got to get back on track here. Back to the mystery bar, though. <laughs> mystery bar. Yes. Do we want to mess with prices at all? Mm -mm. Okay. No. You, you, You're messing with people's money. Give, give people some sense of control. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, and just like whether it's a pie or a calzone, it's the same price. Yes. If you're getting a mystery Jello at the end, yeah, that's all the same price. Okay. Try to keep. You got to keep beers all the same price. So, like, you're obviously, you know, not going to be drawing from the real deep reserves. Right. Maybe you can have, like, one bonus table that nobody knows about. Oh. And, then, and, like, that table. Ooh, I like that. Like, there's one table that has a really, really good beer. Yeah, I like that. Where you're getting into, into you know, like, the elite stuff. Yeah. One table has a Hunapu tap. Ooh, <laughs> yes. I like that a lot. And, and that one rotates throughout the week. Yeah. Nobody knows if they're going to get Hunapu table or not. Ooh, okay. But that's more FOMO. <laughs> that is true. That's true. And you can advertise that, say, the mystery table is whatever it may be that week. Right. Oh, yeah. I like that. One lucky party. <laughs> yes. But yeah, you'll probably lose money on that. But whatever. I don't care. Yeah, People my, will show up. Yeah, it's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> somebody else funding this, not me. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm just the idea guy. <laughs> so the name, I think, has to be something that has nothing to do with beer. Puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I was, I was hoping for a little more content, but I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking how i met your mother's right <laughs> fucking reference <laughs> right i know <sighs> I, it could, yeah I, it could just be like three question marks or racks yeah or an intero bang yes yeah because nobody knows how to pronounce that they, just, they just know how to go <gasps> <laughs> it's either that or i believe it's the sound from metal gear solid right yeah, yeah that's that's what i always think of when i mm, that's how you summon your waiter mm -hmm. No, 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 no. That's how they respond to let you know they're coming. Uh -huh. But the, how you summon them is the uh, just like the, the intercom system that they had. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I thought you were going to make them crawl around in a cardboard box. You can do that too. I need to play that game again. I still haven't played five. I have not. I No, mm. I've once. PS2, come on. I'm, I'm still in the PS2. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm old, I'm old timey. I'm not even old school. I'm just old timey. If you buy a PS4 nowadays, it's probably like what a hundred bucks, um, two hundred bucks. It's probably two hundred because because they do have the they do have the 4K version. But mm -hmm. if you buy a PS4, yeah, I'm pretty sure you have access to all of those other games. Probably. <laughs> but why don't I just wait for the five that's coming out? 
Isn't but, the five coming out in like a year? Probably. Yeah, how does it do that? I don't know. I made it this far with a two. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you don't do it now, it's just going to build till a seven. <laughs> I'm, I'm plenty content with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. Ugh. I'm good with that. Ugh. Your old people life makes me sad. <laughs> you have to jump on things while they're still hot. Nah. <laughs> nah. Missing out on Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> so, Interrobang is the name of the bar. No. The or, name puzzles. Of the, no or puzzles. Or puzzles. <laughs> or puzzles. See, I think it should just be <gasps> <gasps> okay. Yeah. yeah, but it's represented by an Intero Bang. Should we should we put it in a shipping crate or a shipping carton, mm-hmm. shipping container? Put it somewhere that it doesn't belong. Right, and then it'll move. <laughs> yeah, and we'll we'll get that Twitter buzz going. Yeah. Ooh, what about it's Almost. on a boat? Oh, with in, the flippy floppies in like shipping container boats, so it's like nondescript. Ah ha ha! Almost getting into like speakeasy territory. Yeah, but like super speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah, that's super speakeasy. Because, like, there are other speakeasies. Like, there are still speakeasy, like, bars. Yeah. In the air, uh, not in the area, but, like, in the country. Mm-hmm. Where you got to go through, like, telephone booths and, like, uh, walk-in fridges. Right. There is, there is, uh, I, they consider it a speakeasy down on the south side. Oh, yeah. That just doesn't have a sign, though. <laughs> that's all that one is. Well, it doesn't have a sign, and they've got newspaper on the windows. Right. So, <laughs> once you walk in, it's, you know, obviously, it's a full-service bar and everything. Yeah. But, Was yeah. it Acacia? Yeah. Yeah. I like that place. I do, too. I had some Sazerac six year there. It's I'd, probably the best whiskey I've ever had. I think, uh, I, last time I was there, I think, I think I actually had a beer there. Hmm. I think they had the Dogfish Head, the uh, Raisin the Extra. Oh, okay. Yeah. Had not a bad beer. Had it, liked it, drank it. Yeah. It's okay. Not a, not a bad beer. So, just like this one here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, From the uh, what, Southern, Southern Star. Southern Star. The Southern Star. Buried Hatchet Stat. Out of Conroe, Texas. I like this beer, like a lot. Buried Hatchet Stat, yeah. I yeah. like it. I have no idea what the numbers are. Okay. I just know that I like it. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I like it too. It. I feel like, if I had to guess... It's definitely mm. under eight percent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it it, it kind of sits on that bordering of a porter and a stout, a stouter. The the roastiness of it also kind of makes it make me think more of a porter. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So, all right, I found some information. Uh, IBUs is actually fifty. Okay. ABV eight and a quarter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no! <laughs> I was very impressed by that. I yeah, that makes sense then. If the IBUs are fifty and this is eight and a quarter, because yeah, it, it, it it really balances out well to it's not sweet. Yeah. So the bittering really does its work. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good ass beer. I do too. Bottom line, I guess we should go to the podium. Yeah. Steve, why don't you go first? Ah. Uh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I still need to decide. Yeah. Ah. Uh. All right, so I think I'm going to go with the Neshaminy Creek in bronze. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I find that very surprising. Me too. I'm not that confident in it. <laughs> really? <laughs> it, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's good. So what I was, going, what I was getting at in the last segment... Mm-hmm. When we were talking about the Tetragrammaton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that it is flavorful. Yeah. And that puts it above a lot of the New England IPAs. The county line it is more bitter than it is flavorful. Like, okay. Yeah. I would put the county line above other New England IPAs. Mm-hmm. But not necessarily above the Tetragrammaton. Because the Tetragrammaton is full of flavor and basically it has more utility to it. You can pair it with any meal. Okay. That that it has that tropicalness to it. The county line, you're kind of stuck with like you know heavy, heavily flavored meats. It's not bad at all. Mm-hmm. I like it, and I and like I said, I like it above other IPAs. But man, it, it, it's just that thing I keep bumping up against. I hate these baby soft beers <laughs> for the most part. However, but when they're good. <laughs> They're when, very they're, good. when they're the Tetragrammaton, when they're Pseudo Sue, when they're Alpha King, 
Like all of those I would consider in that baby soft area, but they're good because they're super flavorful and they're super fresh and they're super refreshing. Like you want to keep coming back to them. And so that's why the Tetragrammaton goes in silver. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, surprisingly to me, but perhaps not that surprising. Just surprising because I've never had the brewery before. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, surprising because I've never had the brewery before, but this Southern Star Buried Hatchet Stout is my gold for the evening because it is more drinkable than a lot of stouts because a lot of stouts, you get too sweet. You get you get that sweet sickness with you. Mm-hmm. This one, yeah, you throw down a shitload of barbecue with it. <laughs> <laughs> Like I can, you could pair it with desserts or you can pair it with food. Yeah. And it is a, yeah, it's just a real easy drinker. Now that I know that it's eight and a half or eight and a quarter, Mm -hmm. damn, that's a really, really drinkable (laughs) stout for being as big as it is. Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah, that's why, yeah, I just put it above and I put it above the Tetragrammaton because it's more flavorful than that. You just keep going, going up and up. Yeah. In terms of flavors. Yeah. It's, it's. You know, the more flavors you get, because this one is full of roasty and chocolate, mm-hmm. but is, you know, the, the Tetragrammaton is basically pineapple juice, but it's a really good pineapple juice. <laughs> <laughs> and the county line, it, it, it is, it's better and you get a little bit of citrus and you get mostly pine, mm-hmm. but it's mostly more just bitter than anything. So, gotcha. So, way I went. So, for me, I am going to be, uh, you know, what? I'm just going to agree with you across the board. I'm going to give the Neshaminy Creek the bronze medal, uh, the County Line IPA. That one is basically because of my my tastes. I am not a West Coast IPA guy, so it had an uphill battle to begin with, and it didn't uh, it, it it didn't deliver versus the other two to my personal tastes. Now, where I will give it a gold medal is the Canard. I feel that this is by far the best can art of the three that we're looking at tonight. Uh, I love the can art. I think it's great. I think it's uh, well executed. I mean, come on. It's pine trees fighting limes with hot bombs. Really? You like that? I do. All right. I actually do like it. I I, I like the style. I, if I I would have given the uh, Tetragrammaton my favorite. Nope. Can art of the evening. Nope. Uh, that's the silver metal beer for sure. I do like the shininess of it. It is kind of neat looking. But uh, that is definitely a, a juice grenade. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It, between the Chamonix Creek and the Omnipolo, we go Omnipolo. But I got to go Southern Star, gold medal all the way. That stout was bomb ass. Yeah. That's a bomb ass beer. Yeah. Southern Star, get at us. You send can quote us. Put it on your <laughs> website. Send more. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Quote us, send us beer. <laughs> and quote us that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bomb ass stout. Send us more. <laughs> yeah. No, that that is honestly one of the, the best stouts that I've had in a while. But yeah. I am continuously surprised by the more southern facing states. Mm-hmm. And their ability to brew good stouts. Texas has no business brewing good stouts. Yeah. It should be just like all, eh, it's too hot. I'm not doing that. Right. But Texas and uh, Oklahoma and Florida all have pretty damn good stouts coming out of them. Yeah. So, yeah. The lesson here is it doesn't matter where it's coming from. Yeah. Texas makes good beer. Yeah. Newsflash. I'm I'm going to probably nobody. I'm still going to hold out. That oh. Arizona can't brew a stout. <laughs> <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> Phoenix Phoenix is just like, nah. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually illegal in these parts. Yeah. The, the bolts hold too much of the sun. <laughs> can't. The bolts are too hot to touch. Can't Oof. have those. But no, I, I got I to gotta give props to Southern Star. I honestly was not expecting much with this beer. Uh, for one reason or another, I just didn't... I, it's because we've never heard of the brewery. I, I didn't expect too much, and I was fully incorrect. Yeah. Good-ass beer. Yeah. Send us more. Yeah. Also send more on the polo. Yes. I like this stuff, too. And you know what? The Chamonix Creek, <laughs> send some more stuff. Yeah, we can find them pretty easy. <laughs> but send it. Yeah, just if send it. If it's free. It. Just send it. If it's free. <laughs> <laughs> if it's free, fine. I, I, I like other offerings from the Chamonix Creek. Yeah. This one's just simply because of the style. Right, yeah. Yeah, you don't care for that style. Right. All right, cool. If you want to find us on social media, just send us more beer. 
<laughs> then all you got to do is search Hop Nation USA, and that'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, then just search Hop Nation USA on your favorite podcatcher like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, Player FM, Laughable, and Overcast, and that's good enough. Podmania, if that's a thing. Podmania? Yeah, if that's a thing. <laughs> It's going to be the new bit, is I just make up. <laughs> Are they just going to be based off of WWE pay-per-views? Potter Taker. <laughs> <laughs> Hell in a pod. <laughs> pod Cena. <laughs> pod Nation. <laughs> but if you're on any of those platforms... I mean, you're right. They can't see us. We're right. a podcast. Right, exactly. <laughs> If you're on any of those platforms, though, leave us a five-star review because... We are a six-star show, but they only let us use five. And that's a bigger crime than Southern Star being on the hideout from us. <laughs> yeah. 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 We want to do an episode on you. Yeah. It's a bigger crime than things that are committed in Conroe, Texas. Oh, jeez. I'm really hoping you would avoid that. I can't. I'm really hoping you'd sidestep that. It's a good movie. <laughs> Damn it. It's a good movie. Look, <laughs> a couple shitty people... Do not make up the ma- the you know obvious goodness of Texas. Right. Like Conroe obviously has a lot of good things going on in it too. Right, exactly. So they're you know we're doing a service by saying Conroe good. Conroe good. Except for murder bad. Yeah. <laughs> murder bad. Conroe good, murder bad, except for you know those couple guys. Jeez. All right. I think we're done here. Go watch into the abyss. Come on, give me some head.